This LOS is Define and Explain Leverage, Business Risk, Sales Risk, Operating Risk, and Financial Risk, and Classify Risk. So we'll start this LOS with an introduction. This reading presents elementary topics in leverage. Leverage is the use of fixed costs in a company's cost structure. Fixed costs that are operating costs, such as depreciation or rent, create operating leverage. Fixed costs that are financial costs, such as interest expense, create financial leverage. Analysts refer to the use of fixed costs as leverage because fixed costs act as a fulcrum for the company's earnings. Leverage can magnify earnings both up and down. The profits of highly leveraged companies might soar with small upturns in revenue. But the reverse is also true. Small downturns in revenue may lead to losses. Analysts need to understand a company's use of leverage for three main reasons. First, the degree of leverage is an important component in assessing a company's risk and return characteristics. Second, analysts may be able to discern information about a company's business and future prospects from management's decision about the use of operating and financial leverage. Knowing how to interpret these signals also helps the analyst evaluate the quality of management decisions. Third, the valuation of a company requires forecasting future cash flows and assessing the risk associated with those cash flows. Understanding a company's use of leverage should help in forecasting cash flows and in selecting an appropriate discount rate for finding their present value. Business risk and financial risk. So on this slide, we're just looking really at some definitions and these are important to uh, memorize. Business risk and its components. Business risk is the risk associated with operating earnings, okay? So business risk and operating earnings, probably should have highlighted operating earnings in bold. That's the key word there. Uncertainty with respect to the price and quantity of goods and services is the sales risk. So you have to know, understand the difference between the sales risk and the business risk. Business risk, operating earnings. Sales risk, price and quantity of goods of services. Sales risk, greater volatility in operating earnings means more sales risk, okay? Now we get into operating risk, which is the degree of operating leverage, is the risk arising from the mix of fixed and variable costs. And financial risk, finally, DFL, the degree of financial risk. Financial risk is the risk associated with how a company finances its operations. Now that should be a fairly easy one to understand. The more debt that you have is the more financial leverage, which is more financial risk because you need to pay interest. So a quick uh, practice question to check our understanding. If two companies have identical unit sales volume and operating risk, they are most likely to also have identical A, sales risk, B, business risk, or C, sensitivity of operating earnings to changes in the number of units produced and sold. I like this question. It's a little bit tricky. It makes you think. Okay, C is correct. The company's degree of operating leverage should be the same, consistent with C. Sales risk refers to the uncertainty of the number of units produced and sold and the price at which the units are sold. Business risk is the joint effect of sales risk and operating risk. Operating risk, financial risk, and total leverage. Operating risk. A concept taught in microeconomics is elasticity, which is simply a measure of the sensitivity of changes in one item to changes in another. We can apply this concept to examine how sensitive a company's operating income is to changes in demand as measured by unit sales. We will calculate the operating income elasticity, which we refer to as the degree of operating leverage. Degree of operating leverage is a quantitative measure of operating risk. If the degree of operating leverage at a given level of unit sales is two, a 5% increase in unit sales from that level would be expected to result in a 10% increase in operating income. Operating risk, financial risk, and total leverage. So on the previous slide, I've copied over the example that they gave. Uh, if the degree of operating leverage at a given level of unit sales is two, a 5% increase in unit sales from that level would be expected to result in a two times 5% equals 10% increase in operating income, okay? So that's what uh, degree of operating leverage is uh, telling us and giving us. 
So I just wanted to show the formulas now. How do we calculate that too? Okay. So here I have the formulas for a degree of operating leverage, for the degree of financial leverage, and for the degree of total leverage. So you can see here. I have it in terms of letters, and that's the way they give the formulas in the text. I find that a little bit harder to uh, memorize, and that's not the way that I would memorize it. So you can see, moving to the right, for the degree of operating leverage, it is sales minus total variable costs in the numerator, which is our contribution margin, and in the uh, uh, in the denominator, we've got sales minus total variable costs minus fixed costs, gives us our operating income. And that's why I put that into bold and green because I think that's the easier formula to understand for the degree of operating leverage, contribution margin divided by operating income. Okay, so you can see here just in letters that's what it's doing: quantity times price minus variable cost. So that's sales minus total variable cost in the numerator. Denominator: quantity times price minus variable cost minus fixed cost. So that's what the letters are saying. I find it easier to understand it just in terms of the contribution margin income statement. Let's go through the contribution margin income statement again, just for, as a quick review for those that don't have a stronger background in accounting. It's sales minus variable costs gives us our contribution margin. Okay, minus our fixed costs gives us our operating income, and then here they're using the nomenclature of C. Do you see this C? That's our fixed financing costs. And that's going to give us our net income, or what we sometimes say, the bottom line. Okay, sales top line, net income the bottom line. Okay, so you can see here with the degree of operating leverage, sales minus variable cost, contribution margin in the numerator, and in the denominator, sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost is operating income. So it's easy to remember degree of operating leverage, I think, as contribution margin divided by the operating income. Okay. That gives us our degree of operating leverage. Then, if we move here to the degree of financial leverage, where you can see the numerator is the operating income, and the denominator is the um, net income. So it's operating income over net income. So now, for the degree of financial leverage, we're looking at operating income in our numerator, net income in our denominator. Okay, and then finally, for the degree of total leverage, we're looking at our contribution margin. Over our net income. So as I said, I think the easy way to remember this is just set up your contribution margin income statement, and then remember what the numerator is and what the denominator is uh, from that statement, and that's an easier way to calculate, uh, you know, uh, the question starting with that. So we can see the next thing that we move to, and that's why over here in terms of the percentages, this is important to understand. So we can see the degree of operating leverage is the percentage change in net income. From the percentage change in the number of units sold, and so that's what we uh, I showed you. Kept the example here from the previous slide, and that's what it's all about. Saying if we've calculated the degree of oper rate, operating leverage is two, then a five percent increase in unit sales. You know, given that a five percent uh, percentage change in the number of units sold, what's the impact on the percentage change in operating income? So for financial leverage, we're saying, oh, given a percentage change in operating income. What's the percentage change in our net income? And for degree of total leverage, it's given a percentage change in the number of units sold. What is the impact in our uh, uh, percentage change on the net income? Okay. So the, uh, this is why I wrote down here. These questions can be typically set up as two steps. First, you have to work out the math given the uh, dollars given to you. You know, sales units, contribution margin, fixed costs, fixed financing costs. You have to work out that leverage multiplier. That's what that two is. That's a leverage multiplier. Okay, and then you have to say. Uh, then the question is, if the percentage change is uh, is X, then what is the uh, percentage change in the, in the net income or the operating income? So they they work out to be two two step questions. One, calculate the leverage multiplier, and then two, apply that multiplier to given a percentage change in the uh, Denominator. What's the change in the numerator? Okay. So the next thing to understand is that if we look uh, this formula here, the degree of operating leverage times the degree of financial leverage equals the degree of total leverage. Okay. And you can see I've just taken the formulas uh, from above: uh, degree of operating leverage, percentage change operating income divided by the percentage change number of units sold times the degree of financial leverage. 
percentage change net income divided by the percentage change in operating income equals the uh, degree of uh, t a total leverage, which is the percentage change in net income over the change uh, percentage change in the number of units sold. Because you can see here, I just crossed out the numerator and I crossed out the denominator uh, from the operating leverage and the financial leverage, and it showed you. And the same thing here, so I put it on uh, the left side, I also put it on the right side, contribution margin over operating income times operating income over net income equals contribution margin over net income. So that's important to understand as well, okay? And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.